my brothers and I. We were just trying to get the get the uh, audio settings set up, you know, through the spirit. But um, shalom. Shalom. First and foremost, we want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahushai, Ba'ashem, HaKadosh. Double honor to elders and apostles, the great most and ever well, peace and blessings to the elect of Israel. Shalom, and the Baba Ball. Back at the window, let's do the spirit of power of Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahushai, Lord willing, this video is edifying. All right, I got the beloved brother Kodash with me, you know, and we back at it with no lesson through the spirit of power. Y'all watch my shot. All right, you know, in the title of this video, um, not everyone desires the uh, the, the kingdom, man. Right? Kind of not everybody you know? desires the kingdom, right? Because right? you know, because our people, you know, you know, especially like Christians, you know, they may say that they, you know, that they can't wait till the Lord comes back, all right? But just like the saying in the world, you know, your actions speak louder than your words. Yep. All right, so you gotta you gotta be doing the things that is required of you, all right? You know, and how do you bring forth the kingdom, all right? Uh, Wisdom of Solomon. Yep. You gotta, I get it. Wisdom of Solomon six, starting at verse sixteen. Wisdom of Solomon chapter six, starting at verse uh, sixteen. It says, "For she goeth about seeking such as are worthy of her, she with herself favorably unto them in the ways, and meeteth them in every thought." Right, and this is speaking of wisdom, all right? And uh, it says meeting them in every thought, all right? And that's that's how wisdom is with us now. Wisdom meets us in every thought on our day to day. You know, you know when we see things that are off, you know, according to according to the scriptures, you know, we automatically think it. Mm -hmm. you know? It says, "For the very true beginning of her is the desire of discipline." Right, and we went over that. You know, uh, the video we went we went into last week, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken. All right, desire and discipline. All right, knowing, you know, knowing when to chill the hell out. All right, because you can't just obey the flesh. All right, you know, like like they got the sprite commercial, obey your thirst. Mm -hmm. All right, because we can't make uh, our God our belly, as it says in, as uh, Philippians the third chapter. Right, and it says, for the very true beginning of her is the desire of discipline, and the care of discipline is love. And love is the keeping of her laws. Mm -hmm. And the giving heed unto her laws is the assurance of incorruption. Right. So this is how you gain eternal life. All right. By seeking wisdom. And how do you seek wisdom? First first and foremost, you got to fear Yahweh by Shai. That's All right. right. You know, and that's, and that's the issue with a lot of people. They don't fear the Lord. Therefore, the Lord is not granting them with wisdom. Mm -hmm. They're willfully sinning. Hebrews 10 and 26. Yeah, we all sin. But it's a difference between willfully sinning after you already uh, received the correction, all right, than not knowing. All right. Psalms 110 and verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. Pray, his praise endureth forever. So notice how it said, a good understanding have all they that do his commandments, not just hear them only. Okay. Scripture speak about being a hearer of the word and not a doer, man. You know, and I'm going to continue on that wisdom of Solomon. It says, and love is the keeping of her laws. Wisdom of Solomon 6 and 18. And love is the keeping of her laws. And the giving heed unto her laws is the assurance of incorruption. And incorruption maketh us near unto the Most High. Yahweh Bashmel Shai. Therefore, the desire of wisdom bringeth to a kingdom. Right. The desire of wisdom bringeth to a kingdom. All right. So, the... Uh, the more that we serve serve the Lord, the more that we, the more that we continue to seek Him, keep His laws, such His commandments to the best of our abilities, you know, the, the closer we are in, in, into the kingdom of heaven. Yep. All right, because you know, because the Lord he, he requires us to prophesy. All right, the downfall of America, and, and as we're prophesying, all right, these prophecies are coming to pass. Yep. You know, and and these and that and that's part of keeping the laws. The Lord told us to go out to the highways and hedges, Luke fourteen and twenty three. Lord told us to go out to the highways and hedges and compel my people to come into this house. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll continue. Verse 21. If if your delight be then in thrones and scepters, O ye kings, honor wisdom that ye may reign forevermore. All right, that's how you know these Christians are bugged out. All right, you know, they always can't wait to the kingdom of heaven. Okay? You know, even even and our people as well. You know, but you, you people truly don't desire the kingdom of heaven if, if you're not keeping these laws, statutes, commandments to the best of your ability. If you're not seeking wisdom, all right. 
And if you're not uh, investing yourself in these scriptures, all right, then you're not truly desiring the kingdom. That's right. This is Amos chapter 5, verse 18. It says, Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. As if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him or went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall and a serpent bit him. Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light, even very dark and no brightness in it? Point being, verse 18, what did it say? It says, to what end is it for you? Okay, what end is the kingdom of heaven for you, man? You know, you got to question yourself about that, man. That's what I should say. Examine yourself whether you be in the faith or not. Because guess what? The Lord, he's coming back regardless how anybody feels. So what does that day look like for you? You know, and you Christians, you know, you desire the kingdom of heaven, but you don't understand the, the severity of that. You know, you know, we know, we know through the spirit what we're getting ourselves into, man. We know that we're going to have to go through the narrow and straight gate so on and so forth. But a lot of you Christians think that it's going to be a walk in the park. There's going to be no tribulation period. You know, that the elect are not going to have to go through troubles. You, you know, that's why it says to what end is it for you, man? Okay. Mm -hmm. yep, and, 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 and you, uh, people that, that call yourself Israelites too. All right. You people that's half stepping towards the Lord, man. All right. You know, you're not truly desiring the kingdom either, man. All right. You got these other, other camp leaders, of ISUPK, so-called General Johanna, all right, uh, Nate, you know, you don't see these guys, you know, out there toiling like like you see the apostles. Mm -hmm. They're not making full proof, full full proof of their ministry. Mm -hmm. You know, they got they got the other guys set up. You know, they may be the top guys. They got the other guys set up to do the work. But what about you? Right. Scripture says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. The Lord right. said, you got to go out to the highways and byways, you know, diligently. Okay, that's right, man. And and the uh, you know apostles they they set the standard, you know do your videos throughout the week, all right, and go out every weekend, man. All right, we got to do this until you know until all hell breaks loose. I got a precept. It says Matthew twenty three and four. Actually, I'm gonna start at verse. Um, yeah, I'll just read the point. Matthew twenty three, and I'll start at verse three. It says, I'll verse two actually. Matthew twenty three and two saying the scribes and pharisees sit in moses seat all therefore whatsoever they bid you observe that observe and do but do not eat after their works for they say and do not mm. for they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be born and lay them on men's shoulders but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers you see but all their works they do for to be seen of men they make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments and love the uppermost rooms at the feast at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues and in, and greetings in the markets and to be called of men rabbi rabbi mm -hmm. you see so that's talking about you different false uh prophets out there in Israel man okay you know like the brother said uh, you got the you got you got your foot soldiers going out on the highways and byways while you just sit up and count all the tithe monies of the congregation. <laughs> That's wicked as hell. Man. Yeah, man. It's like a modern day fucking Christian. Bro. Yep. Because, you know, what our forefathers and our men who were in power, uh, 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 seats of rulership and, and leadership, they were out in the battlefield with, with, right. with the rest of the soldiers, man. Uh, didn't want to take King David, man. I forgot who it was. Had to hold him back. Right. Like, hey, you got to stay back. You know, you exactly. can't hold. Exactly. Exactly. You know? So that goes to show you that. You know, you got to be out there, too. If you consider yourself ahead of the congregation, you're supposed to be on the front lines, too, with your men, man. All right. And that's truly honorable in the sight of Yahweh Shemoshai. But like it says, for they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be born and lay them on men's shoulders. But they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. Right. You know, and a, and a great leader is, is one that leads by example. man. Yep. You have to be leading by example if you call yourself uh, a leader, man. Yep. Hey, and, and the brother, you know, earlier, going back to the opening point, okay, the brother was saying that, you know, people pretty much give the Lord lip service, okay, this is first, this is uh, first Samuel chapter 2, starting at verse 3, talk no more so exceeding proudly, let not arrogancy come out of your mouth, for the Lord is a power of knowledge, and by him actions are weighed, you see, so the Lord is a power of knowledge, man, 
and he goes and weighs your actions, not what you say out your lips, even though what you say out your lips can get you in trouble as well, or it can bless you, but ultimately it's what your actions, man, okay? And that's the thing about two thirds of our people. They sit here and say that they desire the kingdom, but their actions show otherwise, man. Right, because they, they, our people are comfortable in this place, man. It says in Micah, arise and depart, for this is not your rest. Our people got they, got they, you know, got they feet up kicking it here, man, spiritually. All right, you know, while we, while the men of the Lord, you know, Lord, Lord, we part of that number, you know, you know, we making haste, you know, we making haste, you know, to seek your help by Shemel Shah, you know, while it's still early, man. That's right. And um, I had to speak up Psalms 11, one, Psalms chapter 111 and verse 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, a good understanding have all they that do his commandments. His praise endure forever. Mm -hmm. You know, fear the Lord. That's the beginning of wisdom, man. All right. You know, that's that's the key, you know, to to getting this to get in the kingdom, man. All right, you have to fear Yahweh by Shah. You might as well. All right, because in the kingdom you're gonna fear him. All right, so you might as well do it now. You know? But the Lord, he got that seal, man. He got that seal. Only the elect is gonna fear him. And two thirds of our people, just like in the days of Noah, man. All right, you know, the, the that it's like it's I think we will talk about that last time, you know, it's it's in their spirit, you know, to serve the Lord, but the Lord but the Lord got that seal. Yeah. Got that seal to where they can't cross over. Yep. Hey, this is uh and to back you up, brother, because you know Jake by nature, Jake knows certain things is wrong by nature. You know what I'm saying? But the Lord, he gives Jake the spirit to do what's according to his will. You know, like the scripture say, the righteous is more excellent than his neighbor, but the way of the wicked seduceth them. So Jake, by nature, is a more upright people than these heathen. But Jake gets seduced by the ways of the wicked. And that's the problem with our people. They trim their ways. You know, they get seduced. They think that since Esau is in a position of power, that they got to do what he's going to do so they can be in a position of power. But really, it's the complete opposite. You got to uh, serve Yahweh Shem Hashem like we, like we opened up with. Therefore, the desire of wisdom bringeth to a kingdom, man. If your delight be in thrones and scepters, honor wisdom, man. If you, all you Jake's, Jake love to say, hey, what's up, king? You know, this and that. <laughs> but if you truly want to be a king, you got to go after uh, what a king would go after. And that's the wisdom of Yahweh Bashem al Shai. Because the scriptures say that the throne will be established by righteousness, man. Right. And that's why our kingdom is going to be everlasting. Because it's going to be established in righteousness. You know? And what did uh, King Solomon, you know, which in the reincarnation is Yahweh Shai. What did he pray for, you know, when the Lord... But the Lord was setting him up to be king, man. Mm -hmm. He prayed for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding so he can rule his people, man. Right. You know, you have to rule in, in, in righteousness. Or else, you know, we see what Esau doing. He ruling in wickedness. And now look at this place. All right, you got different variants, you know, coming out. People who are sick, dying. Government threatened that if you don't get the jab, you're going to be in hospitals. You're going to be dying this winter. You know, this is a... a a, a, a rulership ran by the devil, man. That's right. All right, and our people, they're, they're, they are comfortable with the devil ruling over them. Yep. You can tell by their actions. Yep. Hey, look look who they're going to go get help from. They're going to the devil to go Sweet get help. Egypt, man. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that's how you know the brother was on point when he said that. Our people are comfortable with this place. Jake wouldn't want it any other way. Jake wouldn't want it any other way because the moment you try to Drop a little parable to Jake, man. They reject it, man. You know? And that's how you know that they don't want the kingdom, man. Like it says in Isaiah 30, speak not unto us right things. Speak unto us smooth things. Mm -hmm. Prophesy deceits. Right. Get you out of the way. Turn the Holy One of Israel out of the path, man. Roughly paraphrasing, man. You know? Yeah, God. That's real. That was Isaiah 30, what? Yeah, God. You know, I got a quick one to back you up, too. Isaiah 30, starting at verse 9. Okay, Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 9 says that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Most High. Yahweh Hashem al Shai. Children that will not hear the law of the Lord, man. Okay, because the moment we try to tell Jacob about this truth, they don't want to hear it. They stop their ears, man. Okay, or they'll look at you. Jake got the nerve to say that we the problem. You know? <laughs> You guys disgust me. Or, or you guys are the reason why we're in this predicament. You know? But that's the problem with our people. 
They don't, they don't know to discern the spirituality behind this, behind the foolishness of preaching. Verse 10 says, which say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits. Mm -hmm. Tell me lies, tell me sweet lies, man. That's the spirit Jake come in, man, you know? And, that, and a lot of you women come in that spirit too, okay? But that's the thing, we're not going to sugarcoat this truth for anybody, because then that'll be blood on our own hands, man. You know, verse 11 says, get you out of the way, turn aside out of the path, cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because ye despise his word and trust in oppression and perverseness and stay thereon. They trust in oppression and perverseness, man. Like we brother, like the brother quoted. In Isaiah 30, going back to the top, they put their trust in Egypt. That's trusting in oppression, man. You know? Uh, Want to read 13? Come on. It says, verse, Isaiah 30 and 13, Therefore, this iniquity shall be to you as a breach ready to fall, mm -hmm. swelling out in a high wall, whose breaking cometh suddenly at an instant. Right. When they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction is going to come upon you, man. You know, it's like you ever uh, put away dishes and then you see some dishes is leaning over the cabinet, but you try to shut the cabinet real quick so the dishes don't fall out. Well, that's like the Lord's judgment, man. That cabinet door getting ready to be busted open. Like the apostles was bringing out the Pandora's box, so to speak. But it's going to be busted open of evils, man. And you're going to see all types of monstrous judgments of Yahweh Shemel Shai in righteousness, man. Yep. That, okay. That indignation. Yep. And I say monstrous because the Lord won't literally have monster out, out here uh, jacking you people up, man. Don't be surprised if you run into Godzilla here in these last days, man, and be on the shit end of the stick, <laughs> you know, because that's all written in the scriptures. Yep. Hey, hey, you got it. I was just going to say it's to the point now, like, like the people that you already told, you know, it's, it's like we, it's like. You got to be numb to it at this point, you know, like, hey, I'm automatically thinking, hey, you know, you keep acting the way you're acting, the Lord is going to, the Lord is going to kill you, man. Yep. You know, and, and it is, at the end of the day, it's like, it is what it is, man. Let the Lord's will be done. Right. All right, because the warning has gone out. Yep. You know, so you just got to let, you know, let the filthy be yeah, filthy that's spirit. Still, that's man. the spirit. You know? Yep. Um, I wanted to give it this Titus real quick. God. You still 16? got that list, right? God. All right, God. Titus 1 and 16? Yeah. yeah, that was on the list. So hey, okay, man. <laughs> Titus 1 and 16. It says, They profess that they know the Most High, but in works they deny Him, being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate, mm -hmm. meaning void of judgment, a lack of decision making, man. Okay? Jake struggles with making uh right decisions man okay and ultimately the right decision to make is to serve the lord you know but jake is reprobate concerning that man but that's our people they say they know the lord but their heart is far from him and works they deny him man okay and not and the, and the thing is they don't want to know the lord man jake don't want to know you how about because the moment you tell jake okay you want to know the lord stop eating pork Oh no, I can't do that, bro. I love my I love my chicken chorizo, man. <laughs> you know? Jake, Jake's not willing to give up certain things for the Lord, and that's why the Lord don't fully reveal himself to them. You know? Because he know they're not coming in a sincere spirit. But ultimately it's because they're not of the elect. That's really what it is. And they got their belly. I get that, John. That's pretty much precept what you were saying. This is St. John chapter three. And starting at verse 19. <laughs> For God so loved the world, man. <laughs> you know? And that's Israel, man. That world is talking about Israel. What you got, man? John chapter, St. John 3, verse 19 says, And this is the, this is the condemnation that light is come, that light is come into the world. Ooh. And men loved, loved darkness rather than light. Salaki, that reminded me of the Jake at camp where he said, do y'all condemn? Mm -hmm. This is the condemnation. Right. 
Light is coming to the world and men love darkness rather than light. Jake rather go and continue in their folly and, and go celebrate Christmas, you know, and be in that Bacchus spirit, be out in, in, in the house of mirth. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, that, and that's condemnation because light is coming to the world. And that light is the scriptures, man. Yep. But they love darkness rather than light. They'd rather go and be uh, doing what they want to do than take heed to the wisdom of Yahweh Hashem Shai. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Mm -hmm. Deeds go back to works, man. That's right. These people's works are wicked, all right? And it's adverse to what the scriptures says to do. Mm -hmm. So so they're going to they're gonna block it out. Mm -hmm. That's um, right. Verse 20 says, For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Mm -hmm. Now they're coming to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. People don't like be. People don't like to be corrected nope. on what they're doing wrong. Yep. All right, because going back to Philippians 3 and 20, their God is their belly, man, their flesh. Yep. A simple man cannot be approved. But find an excuse according, according to, to his will, will man. All right, you can't tell majority of these niggas nothing, man. Nope. All right, because, because uh, like the scripture says, uh, the Lord's going to give us uh, a heart of flesh, you know, because right now our, our people are, are stiff necked, man. Yep. You know, that's recorded in the scripture, stiff-necked people. Yep. A lot of times you tell Jake the way to go, and they they'll they rather go the opposite way just because you told them not to. Right. You know? Hey, th this is a quick one because the brother was saying how, uh, you know, they hate they hate the righteousness, right? This is Sharaka Ecclesiastes 1 and 25. The parables of knowledge are in the treasures of wisdom, but godliness is an abomination to a sinner. Mm. So... So, so a sinner looks at godliness like an abomination. Like, uh, look at this dude. He reading the Bible, you know? But we looking at them like, oh, look at this nigga. He's smoking a blunt, you know? He threw, you know what I'm saying? Hey, but that's, but that's the thing, though. Who is right at the end of the day? Because you are coming with your feelings and your opinions. We're coming out of the Bible. That's the difference. We're, the, the words of the Lord is what's backing us up. So this is not of our own private interpretation, you know? And we we be said that when he saw on how is about he 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 be what's that what's that scripture? Sirach Ecclesiastes chapter one and verse twenty-five. The parables of knowledge are in the treasures of wisdom, but godliness is an abomination to a sinner. Right, man. Godliness is an abomination to the sinner, man. You know? You know, even though the laws ain't given to Esau, but He's he don't even believe in the Most High, man. Mm -hmm. All right, the things that we're doing are disgusting. Why do you think they why do you think they block our channels? Yeah, you know why do you think they they uh they have employees to do that diligent search, you know, to try to strike our channels, man. Yep. All right, you know, because they they hate this word, man. Yep, that's right. He says that in Wisdom of Psalm in the second chapter it says how the men of the Lord are grievous to behold. Mm -hmm. So them just looking at us. In our in in our right state of mind, they're grieved at that. The scriptures say, "He that teaches his son grieve at the enemy." Right, right. You know, so Esau hates to see an educated Jake, who knows who he who, who knows who he is, who knows his worth in his power. Yahweh Shemel Shai. Esau hates to see that man because he knows he can't penetrate that. He knows he can't defeat that man. And contrary to popular belief, you know, if you uh, smoking a blunt and and got a uh, you got like a pistol on your hip. You know, flexing on Instagram, Esau, he loves that, man. Yep. All right, but the most dangerous thing, I can, we can all attest for it, man, is you is you reading the scriptures. That's the most dangerous thing that you can do in America, man. Yep. All right, because this is uh, going against, you know, everything that Esau has, has spent trillions of dollars on. This is going against all their, uh, all that they talk about at the round table, man. Yep. And it's generational, too, because this isn't just like Esau out of nowhere was like, oh, let's just try to stop the Israelites, so to speak. This has been since the time of uh, Adam and Eve, man. You know, the Lord said he put enmity between the serpent seed and the woman's seed. Perpetual hatred. Perpetual hatred. This is a perpetual hatred. So this has been from lifetime to lifetime. And, and that's the thing about Jake. Jake is starting to come to come to a realization now. But, you know, a lot of Jake's still out there to still think Esau's their friend. Mm -hmm. But not one Edomite is your friend, man. Just because he smiles in your face and, and speaks sweetly to you does not mean that he has your best interests at heart. Okay? That's the, the art of war is deception. 
And Esau is a man of war. He's a man of blood. And he's all about deception, man. But Khan, uh, what's the next scripture you want? Uh, Matthew 6 and 33. Uh, this is Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33. It says, But seek ye first the kingdom of Yahweh Baal Shem Yahweh and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. All right, so all these things that that um, that our people love to go after, all right, you know, because going after like like uh, the finer things, you know, the having a big house. That's why people sell out, you know, because they they want these things that that you have by I already promised to us. You just got to be patient, all right. But you got to seek the kingdom of heaven first, man. Mm -hmm. Then it's going to be added on to you. Got to the Lord got to prove you first, man. Yep. The Lord is going to give us so much in the kingdom of heaven. So he, so he has to prove you first, man. That's right. All right. He can't have, you know, somebody that is not capable of doing a job in that position, man. So we got to be tried through that fire right now. We're being tried through that fire. All right. Because, you know, and we seeking out to the, we seeking out to the kingdom, man. Yep. All right. We fuck Babel, forget Babylon, man. Yep. All right. Babel, Babylon is not the end all be all. Nope. You know, so you got to seek the kingdom of heaven first. Then, man, that's the key. Seeking the kingdom of heaven first, you know people people want all things to be added on to them first, and then seek the kingdom of heaven. Right, you know, but that's not how the way that's not the way it goes. Man. Yeah, the scriptures say, "Before honor comes humility." Brother says, "The Lord got to prove us before we get into that position." This is Sirach Ecclesiastes four and seventeen. It says, "For at the first she will walk with him by crooked ways, and bring fear and dread upon him, and torment him with her discipline." Until she may trust his soul and try him by her laws, then will she return the straight way unto him and comfort him and shew him her secrets. So wisdom, the spirit of power Yahweh is going to try you. It's going to it's going to walk with you through the crooked ways because when you first come into truth, you still got partly of that worldly nigga side to you, man. And every now and then, as you grow in this thing, it always starts to creep back up. But but through the spirit, you know, Lord gives us the spirit to fight it off. Cut off that old man. Exactly. Man. So wisdom will walk with you through that, but she's going to bring fear and dread upon you. She's going to torment you with your discipline. She's going to try you by the laws. She's going to see if you got the spirit to actually love the Lord or just follow your own flesh. Okay. And then once the Lord proves your spirit and sees, okay, you know, this man is sincere, then he's going to show you, you know, her, his secrets and comfort you and show you the right way, man. Because the biggest way that the Lord, he's going to try you, you know, he's going he gonna to bring you around, you know, uh, certain groups of people, you know, that are that are doing things that, you, that you're trying to overcome. Yep. Are right, you going to put you to the test right then and there? Are you going to stand stiffly for him or are you going to fold? Right. That's right. Yeah. And it says, but, verse 19, Sirach Ecclesiastes 4 and 19, but if he go wrong, she will forsake him. And give him over to his own ruin. That's right. So if you want to fall out this thing, wisdom going to forsake you, man. And leave you up to your own destruction and ruin. Lest the Lord Paraventure happens to have mercy on you. But I wouldn't want to play that game, man. Because there's plenty of scriptures talking about how he that put up his hands to the plow and looked not back is not fit for the kingdom. You know, it's impossible for a man to once be enlightened to taste of the heavenly gift. You know, so there's more scriptures leaning towards the side of once you fall out, you donezo. Then scripture saying the Lord gonna have mercy on you, man. Now, at the end of the day, the Lord have mercy on whom he will have mercy. But don't fucking tempt the Lord, man. The scriptures say not to tempt the Lord. You know, slock it for my French. <laughs> you know, but hey, you got that, brother. Uh, uh, this is Revelation 21, starting at 1. It says, I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there were no more sea. And I, John, and I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from the Most High, out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Now, mm -hmm. That's the elect, you know, coming down off them, off them ships, you know, you know, uh, adorned for her husband, man. Yeah, huh? All right, you know, and and, and that, that that's what we're seeking for, new bodies, man. Yeah. Man, you're not seeking the kingdom. You're not, you're not ready for a new body. All right? Tired of aches. You know, you, you may uh, slip and fall. You know, we're not going to have that slipping and falling in the kingdom, man. You know, we're going to be immortal. 
Yep. New bodies, man. Spiritual power. But people don't think about that. All right? It's too far out. Wisdom is too high for a fool. That's right. Wisdom is too high for a fool. That's right, Ox. Nah, but that's... You got something else? Nah, I ain't having anything else, bro. All right. You know, so we, we, we can close with that. You know, uh, the Lord willing, the point was made. You know, we're going to close and give all praise, honor, and glory. Unto Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh, by Hashem, Kadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders, great millstone. Peace and mercy to the house of David. And to the next lesson, we say Shalom and a Baba Ball. Shalom and a Baba Ball. Shalom.